This is Couples Court with the Cutlers. We're here on the case of Elijah versus Neil. You all have been together for four years and you met on Facebook. Is that correct? Yes, yes Your, Your Honor. Honor. All right, Mr. Elijah, you brought your girlfriend here to court today. Yes, Your Honor. Why have you brought her here? Because I want to marry her, but I want to find out whether she's cheating or not. Mm. All right, and you're here, Miss Neil, because... I'm here to prove that I'm not cheating, Your Honor. Okay. Um, and to basically save my family mm. and my relationship. All right. Let's look back on how you got here. You all met on Facebook. Yes. How did that happen? Actually, I posted a picture and she liked it. So I inboxed her and asked her why she liked it. And she was like, I think you're cute. So... Oh. Oh. Yeah. All right, all right. So, Mr. Color, we didn't have Facebook. I couldn't inbox you then, but I would have <laughs> inboxed you. But you would have. I would have. You would have. I would absolutely. Okay. So, why... I, you know, I was watching her during this whole thing. She was just smiling. <laughs> okay, tell me about that. When you saw his picture go, blink. He didn't know, but... I, we went to high school together. He was more, like, in his... Like, his final years of high school, I was just starting. Ah, and so I you had been a, eyeballing that. Yeah, I had a crush on him, but he was in a relationship. So when I saw him post the picture, I was just like, oh, well, let me like the picture and see if you still in a relationship. I ain't mad right. at There you me. go. I like, it. I like it. I like it. And so what did you all do in your early days? We stayed in two different spots. So, like, when we met up, it was like we <laughs> would walk on dirt roads, cause like, from the country. That's all and good. I had a butterfly feeling every time I saw it, like, because it's oh, so far away. You know. Like I had when I met you, butterflies in my stomach. You had butterflies when you <laughs> met me? No good. No good oh, butterflies. I still get butterflies. Okay. How does that make you feel, right. Mr. Cutler? <laughs> right. I really do. It's okay. Butterflies are good. Butterflies are what keep it hot. Right. <laughs> what did you all like to do for entertainment? Or did you go to movies? Did you go to restaurants? Oh. What kinds of things you like to do? Honestly, he might decide to cook. He always, basically, we always ate, like, pork chops, rice, garden peas, cornbread. That was his thing to cook. Okay, you're making me hungry now. (laughs) (laughs) Did he cook that for you? Yes! That's what I'm talking about! I wish I could come off this bench and give you a hug. A man who can cook a right pork chop is not to be underrated. (laughs) You hear me? Right. Okay, you tell me why we're here. Every time you texting somebody, it's a dude somewhere she's texting, actually. Okay, tell me specifically what is bothering you about her texting. Like, it might be a text saying, I'm gonna come and see you. Okay, you've actually seen texts that said, I'm coming to see you? Yes. What do you say to that? I mean, if I didn't respond to the text message, I don't... I really don't know what to say because I didn't respond back to it. So you asking me, well, why is he telling you he's gonna come see you? I can't control what they told me they gonna come do. Well, here's the yeah. thing. A guy is not going to write you and say, when can I come see you, unless he has an expectation that, he's that he see can you. come see you. But see, that's you the thing. That don't work neither, because she still texts him. Where's your number posted that all these fellas no, my, are getting your my number? My phone number isn't posted anywhere. And it's not always guys. I don't just randomly give my number out to a guy okay. that I meet. It's people that I've already known before him, and I might they not might inbox me. Or they might comment on a picture that I post and tell me to inbox them. And that's my decision. And, I, yes, I do inbox them. And eventually, after the conversation, I give them my number. It's so, not like I meet random guys. So do these guys know that you're involved in a relationship with Mr. Elijah? I tell all of them that I'm in a relationship. And some of them say they don't care. And some of them do back away and they don't text me again. But some of them say they don't care. Okay, so let me ask you something. Woman to woman. I don't have the need for other men to say anything to me. This one's got that covered. Is there an unmet need in terms of your relationship with Mr. Elijah that you are trying to get from these other men? It actually is, but when I tell him that, it's, no, you just trying to make up an excuse. He throws it off to the side and tries to flip it back on me, and he just <laughs> ignores the fact of what I just told him, the reason why I do it. Okay, you talk to him about why that's not good. Did this ever <laughs> cause you to break up with uh, Miss Neal? Um, yeah, on occasion, yeah. Why? Like, it, like, it even been a time, like, we had to move and separate from each other, and she was staying with my dad and his girlfriend, and they had a party. And they told me that she left, but when I called her, she would never answer the phone. No, 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 don't, don't tell, don't well, try to... Me... But when she finally answered the phone, she still wouldn't tell me where she was. But you all were broken up. Yes, not, not yes, exactly. we were. No, yes, we, we were. We were just in two separate okay. spots. In your eyes, were you all broken up? <laughs> no. Okay. 
Oh my! God. I thought you just said y'all was on a break. We that were broken was up. No, you were no, no lie. lie. You were no yeah. lie. All right, so he finally got in touch with you, and you eventually went back to his dad's house. Is that right? Yes. Okay, but so what happened when you got back? Before all of that, she asked me to pick her up. If you all were broken up, why did you call him to come pick you up? Yeah. Because he had called my phone before I left Savannah, and he asked me, would I come back and could we work on it? And that's why I was like, okay, well, you pick me up in Statesboro, and we'll go from there. We can work on whatever you want to work on. But see, when I Is got Is that how there, you remember it, Mr. Elijah? I mean, yes, somewhat. But when I got there... Yeah, somewhat. It's always somewhat. But when I got there, I wasn't expecting to see two guys and her and another girl. The other one was the person that I was with while I was in Savannah. It was his car. But at some point, you all got back together, right? (laughs) Y'all got in the car together. What did that look like? A mess. We on the way back. She didn't even say nothing the whole time. But the whole time, I was asking her... Oh, you lie. About why was it two dudes and two girls in the car. Okay, so when she get in the car, that's what you fire off. Yeah. Who you in the car with? Yeah. And what did you say? When we got Maybe that'll refresh his memory. Because he never stopped talking about it. It was even two days later. We had an honest hour. And what okay. did you tell him? I told him that me and the dude had actually slept together. And we had been... I had been down there with him since I left from his dad's and his girlfriend's house. And how long were you in Savannah? I was only in Savannah for two days. No. Yes, I no. was. It no. was. I know what no. day I was in Savannah. No. I know what day... So what you found a was. guy in Savannah in two no, days? No, no, no. I knew this yeah, guy Yeah, she previously. found a guy in, like, two days. Oh, my God, no. Specifically, why do you believe she's cheating? Like, it was this time, like, I went in the house and it actually smelled like sex in the room. And the ceiling fan, the ceiling fan wasn't on before I left. I probably left, uh-huh. like, four to five minutes. Okay, That's, and when was this? It was actually June the 7th. Okay, June seventh. Tell me, tell me what happened. That's... Why is the ceiling fan on? Why it smell like sex to First him? First of all, he's lying because <laughs> I'm not. he had been there. My son's birthday was June fourth. We had a birthday party for my son. He was there the fourth, the fifth, the sixth. But and the we sixth. talking about June the seventh. I don't care. You were there before, and you were there that day early, and we actually did have sex that night before wow. that. But we talking about June the seventh. Okay, so what happened June seventh specifically? I left for probably like four to five minutes. Uh-huh. Right, so I come back. The door locked. The door ain't never locked. Which door? You the front door. door the front door ain't never locked. So I'm be- banging on the door. I'm probably out there for like 20 minutes, maybe. Wow. Banging on the door. Yeah. You don't have a key to the house? No. Okay. Okay. So the, the so, door is locked and you beating on it. So you get in the house and what happens? She even smelled like soap, like she just had washed off or something. All right. I always do that. I can take a... I can... And I the can ceiling litter- fan is on when you go in there. And yes. the ceiling fan hadn't been on. No. And you couldn't think of a reason for the ceiling fan no. to be on. And it smelled like she that. don't run the ceiling fan. It's always cold. Oh, All right. God. Was there another instance after that? Actually, June the 9th. So two days the later. The anniversary, really? June oh, the wow. 9th. You funny. The day I left, probably like for two hours. By the time I come back, she smelled like soap and don't chain clothes. We all right. been out in the heat all day. What you expect? Okay, so, so tell I mean, a woman so, can't take a bath? Because she's taking in the phone in the bathroom. What, what you need the phone in the bathroom for? You take your phone in the bathroom. You do it, too. How you know she smelled like soap? I mean, I'm just because curious. I can smell it on her. How close did you get to her? Close. But she was trying to <laughs> push me you, away. Were you inspecting her? Yes. Yeah, basically, yes. to be honest. I, well, I got to tell you, do. This, is, this is a whole nother level. And I don't sniff me. Just don't, don't do sniff. that. Okay. All right. Don't don't inspect me even. I don't even want to be inspected. <laughs> you cannot have those levels of suspicion and paranoia. Because so far, what you're telling me, it does not equate to cheating. It is as if you have gone off the rock. Now she's admitted. She told you she admitted that she had cheated. In and I understand why you would have an issue with that. If you're gonna stay in this relationship, you're gonna have to let that go. In addition to this matter that you have, your love suit, you also have a lawsuit. Yeah. What's your claim in your lawsuit? I bought a ring that I bought because I wanted to marry, but it's too late for me to take it back now. So I want my money back in the ring. What a ring is? Okay. <laughs> I was gonna say, did, did she have, did you give did her you the ring? Did you propose to her? Yes. It ain't then... on my finger. <laughs> have you given her the ring? Yes. Well. If okay. it's on my, you know, my finger, so what a ring at, Deandre? You I ain't have no idea ring. what she did with it, but she had it. Oh, wow. So now I'm a magician, too. I'm Houdini. I disappear rings, too, huh? <laughs> oh, I know. Do you have no re-
Okay. 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 He never gave me a ring. I've never got a ring. Have you okay, seen the ring? Okay, have you seen the ring? Never seen a ring. Didn't even know nothing about a ring till today. When did you propose to her? When? Oh, I forgot, Ashley. Oh. 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 Okay, wait a minute. Okay. Hold up. Okay. Hold, hold, hold up. Wow. Now, I don't remember the date. Wow. But I can tell you it was August of 1981. It was a hot August day in Atlanta. I had worked all day. I was all dusty from doing, what was it? Inventory. Inventory at the store I worked at. Mr. Cutler was like, come on over, I have cooked dinner. We had T-bone steaks, baked potato, salad, cheesecake, and sweet tea. And I looked a hot mess, because I had been in a hot room all day. And he got down on one knee, hallelujah. And he said, Will you? and I was like, no, because I wanted to look beautiful on that day. And I did not look beautiful on that day. And he proposed to me. I remember everything about that day. Yeah. So how you not going to remember proposing to her? Yeah. And how you going to remember it? Well, you got a receipt actually, or something yes, for this ring? I got a receipt for it. You okay. got a receipt well, for it, but where my this, ring at? I know that's yeah. right. Why Ron, would you grab that, place? please? Thanks, sir. You never got a ring. I never got a ring. Have you had a proposal? No, if I did, I would remember it just like you remember That's what I'm right. talking about. So you're suing for a ring that she says you never even gave her. I, she I got it. <laughs> but you don't remember you know, when you, you gave it to her or how you gave it to her. Was it in a restaurant or was it at home? No, so it was He'll at take home, me to the restaurant, so I know it, it was where? at restaurant. Home. It was at home? Yes. Um, you all have kids. Did any of the kids see this? <laughs> <laughs> No. Okay. All right, now, but it said we do have a receipt here for $2,000. That's a nice That's ring. A nice ring. Yeah. Yes. Well, it's a nice ring that I ain't never seen, so I hope you can see a picture of it. Uh, well, <laughs> let me just say this. I know you got your receipt, but she doesn't seem to have the ring, and your a testimony is not consistent with somebody who's proposed and gave a ring. <laughs> so I'm going to just tear this up, dismiss your lawsuit, and we're going to keep it moving. Your claim is denied. Now, we still have to go back to the cheating allegation. And in order to get to the bottom of that, Ms. Neal, you have submitted your phone to the court for examination. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. All right. And so at this point, the court would like to call cybersecurity expert Mr. Greg Evans. Ron, would you please bring in Mr. Evans? Yes, sir. Mr. Evans. Hello, Your Honors. How are you? I'm great. Good to see you. Mr. Evans, how have you used technology to catch cheaters? I do cybercrime investigations, including forensics and social media investigations. In this case, you were able to examine Ms. Neal's phone. Is that correct? Yes, I did. And when I did... Um, I noticed, the first thing I noticed when I got the phone, that Miss Neal had went through the phone and started deleting information on the phone, like videos, text messages, and um, photos. Are you able to recover deleted information? Yes, I am. <laughs> what did you find? I was able to recover 166 photos and found eight deleted videos on her phone. What did you find with the photos and videos? Hmm. <laughs> Out of 166 deleted photos and the eight deleted videos, they were all innocent. There were so many of her kids, her with the kids. She's taking selfies in the mirror with the kids and they had pictures of you. Same thing with the videos. So nothing incriminating. I'm gonna be honest with you. This is the first case myself or anyone on my team has where we received a phone where a person deleted information before handing it over, mm -hmm. where everything on there was innocent. <sighs> it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I, I'm so tired of this. I'm so tired of it because I know I'm not doing nothing. And it's like, it's pushing me to feel like, well, if you're going to keep badgering me and accusing me, why not go do it? 
because I have two kids. I'm a stay-at-home mom. I can't get a job right now because I don't trust everybody with my kids. I get that. I don't like everybody being around my kids. So I'm with my kids every single day. And if I'm bathing my kids or I'm cooking for my kids and you telling me because I didn't text you back in a, time, a timely fashion that I'm doing something, then you need to leave me alone. All right. Now, she's admitted she has done something in the past while you were on a break. You all dispute whether that was a break, but in her mind, it was a break. But that's the past. You've got to deal with her right now. Now, you loved her enough to propose to her. You loved her enough to buy her a ring. That I didn't get. <laughs> you need to love her enough to give her that ring and move forward with that. Are you prepared to do that? Yes. You all are married and have one child together. Is that correct? Yes, yes Your Honor. Honor. But allegations of cheating are tearing your relationship apart. Is that right, Mr. LeBeau? Yes, Your Honor. And you have brought your wife here accusing her of, in fact, cheating. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. All right. If, in fact, we find out she's cheating, what does that mean? I have no other choice but to leave her because I can't be anybody's doormat like that. I love her. I love my family. We have a beautiful child together. But like I said, I just can't stand around and just be somebody's doormat like that. So your life together is at stake based on what we find out today. Yes, Your Honor. Do you understand that, Ms. LeBeau? Yes, Your Honor. What do you hope to prove today? I'm here to prove that I'm innocent. It hurts me that he thinks that I would be doing something like that when I'm working for our family and for a better future for us and our child. Okay, Mr. LeBeau, you see that your wife is saying this is hurting her. Why do you think she's cheating? What are the warning signs? What, is, what makes you think that? The number one thing is her cell phone. Okay. She used to keep it by her bedstand at night when, she, when it's charging. But over the last few weeks, for some reason, it's been underneath her pillow. It's been, become like, almost like Fort Knox to try to get to her phone. And I don't understand why, if she doesn't have anything to hide. Okay, so, Ms. Well, LeBeau, are my, you... I leave are... my phone on my charger at night, just like everybody else, next to my head. So if there's an emergency at night, I can hear it. There's no, nothing being hidden. If you ask, I give it to you. So I don't understand where But you it... don't. That's why you keep it underneath your pillow. We hear that all the time about the cell phone. That's, I mean, that's... That is a number one issue, is the cell phone, how you mm -hmm. handle it, what you're under doing the, with it. Under the mattress, behind the nightstand, behind the headboard, under the pillow. Sleeping literally on their body. Oh, yeah. So you think that she is hiding the phone because she has either text messages or phone calls from or other something. men? Yes, yes, Your Honor. But what I don't get is why she lies about where she is. You know, I installed an app that actually has GPS on it, and she'll lie about where she is. You know, she'll say she's uh, at a restaurant with her friends, and when I look it up, it's not the restaurant that she said. It... All right, tell I'm, me about I'm that. I'm fully aware that there's GPS on my phone. So I don't see where the problem was. I've told him I'm at, uh, you know, lunch with a friend. I'm sorry if I go to CVS afterwards. But, <laughs> so, but no, the you whole... Know? But you told me a completely different restaurant, you know, like point A to Maybe point D is completely different. Maybe we changed our mind. Different. I don't remember the exact date because it was so mundane. It doesn't matter to me. Okay, to that point, Mr. LeBeau, there's one thing to say, I'm going to restaurant A and mm -hmm. you end up going to restaurant B. But it doesn't matter. If she tells him she's at point A and she's at point B, no. that's dishonest. It's you not... know when yes, me and my girl will tell you, hey, color, we're going so-and-so. And then we on the way, you know, I really don't want to go there. Why don't we go there? We see well, somewhere right. else. Right. I'm not doing anything differently. Right, but the, the difference is he's asking her because he's he's double checking her. So he's got the GPS so you're ready. Me a woman can't Where change are... her no. mind. <laughs> you think me as a woman or any woman is not gonna change her mind now and again. I'm not saying you can't <laughs> change your mind. What I'm saying is if he's got the GPS ready. Miss LeBeau, where... Oh, he calls her Savannah. Savannah, where are you? And she said, I'm here. And then he checks the GPS, and she's at that moment somewhere else. That's where the problem's coming. Is, is that, that what's going yes, on? Honor. That's what's happening. This isn't about changing your mind. All right, so Mr. Cullen, already... I'm gonna have to give you some credit for clarity on that, because I was not seeing that. That's yeah. a different picture. You're dead sure she's cheating. You're tired of being accused. I'm tired of it. This day is to let us move on from this, and hopefully we can resolve some issues and... Either and you want to be happy? Yeah, yes. All right. Yes. How did you all meet? Funny story. So, um, you know, I'll, I'm an avid poker player. You know, um, in Dallas, we actually have a lot of um, bars that have uh, free roll poker. So um, I actually made it to the final round, so they had a smoke break. And uh, so I go outside, and um, 
I see this beautiful woman in the corner crying. So I think to myself, jackpot. <laughs> you know? Wait, you see a woman crying beautiful. and your mind says jackpot? How, do, how does that bar. work? At a bar, you know, so. Oh, so that means kind of like he's like, Oh, that's that. I'm. I'm gonna get that. Easy prey. Is yeah. That, easy yeah. prey. Is that what it was? Achievable. Yeah. <laughs> Achievable prey. I said, I'm gonna write. That's a, a phrase I had that not is... heard before. Achievable uh, uh, prey. So, so what? You know he... you're gonna hear that again, right? No, I'm not. Yeah, achievable no. prey. Yeah, I'm not achievable prey. Not you. I'm oh, just, just again. Yeah, yeah. All right. So what you talk? So you know, what... I get. I, I sit down. I talk to her. I introduce myself. And so... you get ready to turn this round upside down. There you go. <laughs> so. Everything, we hit it off, everything went well. Every, you know, one thing led to another. And this is where it's funny. This is where Because it's been pretty funny now, all yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all The next right, day, so she, the funny. next morning, she actually asked me, when are you leaving? <laughs> and I, and this is what, it's funny. I actually said, my friend's already on his way to pick me up. And, and she I, couldn't believe that. Well, I'm used to guys coming over and moving in the first, you know, the first time we're together. So she I didn't, was She didn't like the high five. I said, it was fun. See you later. Oh, okay, wait, wait, wait. wait, wait. Okay, yeah, yeah, wait. You, <laughs> you, did you just say to this court that you are used to guys staying one night and moving in? <laughs> that they liked. That's what they expect to do. And I'm oh, Miss LeBeau. Miss LeBeau. No, she's got to like that. I guess. Oh my goodness! I, I feel like I, I almost need to faint on all that. <laughs> okay, so it sounds like you were also intrigued. I was. That's mm -hmm. what got my attention. I was very intrigued, and it made me actually. You know. She started coming to uh, yeah. my work all the time. I was a server <laughs> at a restaurant, and uh, every shift she was there, you know. Ah, so oh, tables turned. He, be he right, became the achievable it. prey. He became the yeah, I told you I was going to use it again. The hunter became the prey. You know? yeah. The hunter became the prey. Yeah. So you slow walked him from a one night stand to a, put a ring on it. Mm -hmm. Why do you believe your wife is cheating? I think she's cheating because, you know, I go to her work. And I know she is a cocktail waitress, so it is her job to flirt. But I think it's a little excessive. And she, when she's, you know, she'll be at the server station and you can see her writing something on the check. You don't so, think it's a drink order, at, possibly? But um, I've actually seen one of the checks and it had your number on it. Oh. No. No, Your Honor. That's not true. Are you extra flirty? Of course, that's how I make my money. He's been a server before. He knows how to make money as a server. That's what uh, you do. That's part of the job. Okay, you know we've had friends. We had a son who worked in the service industry. And yeah. Tips are made because exactly. You, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you the nicer you are, the bigger tip is. He probably did. No one here. He did. He's your son. Yeah, he did. I, <laughs> I, <laughs> so we get it. We get yeah. that. And but you think, you say it stops there. Yeah, of course. You don't believe that? No. The nail in the coffin for me to believe that she's cheating is this video chat thing. So, Whoa. she is a model. She's modeled for a long time. Okay. But a couple days ago, I was playing poker again. And I came home, and um, she was naked on the couch. And when I come, come in, she tries That's to cover up thing, real right? quick and <laughs> closes the laptop. If you don't mind, I could actually show you how it kind of happened. All right, let's All right. see. Let's see. So, you know. You walked in the house, you saw your wife naked on the couch. Yes. What was your first thought? What was your first thought? What would be your first thought? <laughs> because I think most guys would like that. I mean, I, I did until she covered herself up and closed the laptop. <laughs> I could, so she was on the sofa like this. All right. She's naked. I walk in. And what does she do? She covers herself up and closes the laptop. So what do you think she's doing? She said she was taking the modeling pictures. So she left the room. I open up the laptop. And it wasn't the camera background. It was actually a video chat background. And so you believe she was having a video chat with another man? Yes, Your Honor. If she was doing modeling pictures, the backgrounds wouldn't have dirty clothes and dirty dishes. It would be a nice, clean background, you know? What kind right. of modeling it, pictures are going to have dirty to clothes in it? And it would be on the, on the camera setting, not the video setting? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Like All I was right. saying. Miss LeBeau. Ms. LeBeau. <laughs> May I explain my side? Uh, please. Yes, I was nude on the couch taking pictures. When you apply to a modeling job, you have to submit candid photos of yourself so that they can see what you look like to get hired for the paying job. But your well, job's going to have hire you if you have dirty clothes and dirty pictures. Hold on, hold on. When, let me, when let... you're submitting those preliminary pictures for the gig, they don't care what the background looks like. They never have, they never will. That's where they come in. That's their job. 
Right. Not my job. Oh, my Bo job is to show them me. That's it. I take a picture, a candid picture of myself, submit it to them, see if I get the job. That's it. He doesn't know the whole side of the business. Okay, Mr. Oh. Bo I, we get all that. Here's my question. This was video. This wasn't pictures. It absolutely was not. He says it was video. The, I think uh, most of us know when our, you open a laptop, the difference between camera video setting button, and video was, setting. On our computer, on our laptop, it's the it was same the video exact button. button. You can press the same button to go camera or video, camera or video. But it wasn't on that. It was on. All right, I, but you know what? It's a whole. Before you could we have even get the to key that point, it could have changed. To why video. did you jump and cover yourself? Because he up. wasn't supposed to be home. I didn't know who was walking in the door. I had no idea. I was I was scared. Well, <laughs> like, what about the background? I didn't know anybody Again. was going to be walking into my home while I was nude. It was. But he had a key. Uh, it was, I, I was just in shock, I mean. And that's why I don't believe it, because all these, look, if these, these are all. Hold on, just a minute, those are pictures of Ms. LeBeau? Of uh, modeling pictures, yes. Ron, could you please get the evidence from Mr. LeBeau? Yes, Your Honor. So, this definitely, I would think, helps prove, because, like I said, is she modeling for a flop house or something? Those are the photographers took, not f pictures that I was submitting for jobs. Those are for the actual, or the actual jobs. And if you see all these pictures, she's not nude. She always at least has a bikini on. So why in this instance she was nude? So Mr. LeBeau, you submitted to the court pictures of published photos of her modeling. Yes, you're right. And they all have some but level of clothing. Yes. And is your understanding that this is the type of modeling that she does? For the most part, yes. Okay. But what you saw was different from this. Well, it's completely different, night and day different, you know? Well, that's, that's, uh... Mr. LeBeau, We've got pictures that Mr. LeBeau has provided. Why didn't you just send these pictures? Because you have, like, I, those were a year, couple years ago. You have to give photos that are updated. I had to change my hair color, my weight changes, my skin tone changes, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay, but if you're trying to get a gig, and I'm just, you know, taking pictures on a couch with dirty clothes and dirty dishes, that's not gonna make you look your best. Even though I know they're focused on you, you wanna put forth your best effort. I also will... Like, if there's dirty clothes that you can see in the picture, I'll cut them out and crop it. I mean, I'm not gonna just send that in. I mean, come on. So you see why we're here today? It's hinky. Yeah. I think we've heard enough testimony, and here's what we're looking at. You have concerns about her with her phone. She's sleeping with her phone under the pillow. She treats it like Fort Knox. She's at work, she's giving her number to other people, and she's getting numbers from other people, and you're concerned that, you know, she shouldn't be doing that. She's cheating. And you come home, and she is naked on the sofa, taking a video of her, and you open it up and find out it's a video chat that you think is going to somebody else. Yes, Your Honor. And because of all of this, you think she's cheating. Yes, Your Honor. So I need to just find out whether or not she is, because if she's cheating, I can't be... Like, again, I keep saying that I can't be someone's doormat. If she's cheating today, I, I have to just move on. It's make it or break it today. And so, Mr. Cutler, this family, this marriage, is on the line. Everything is at stake. So if it comes out that she's cheating, they're done. Everything's at stake. That's to that point. This court has done a full and complete investigation to determine, is she cheating? <laughs> at this time, the court will hear from private investigator Todd Redding. Ron, would you please escort Mr. Redding into the courtroom? Yes, Your Honor. Over to the witness stand. Mr. Redding, how are you? Fine, Your Honor. Welcome. It's good to see you. Thank you. Could you please share with the court what your team did to investigate this matter? Yes, Your Honor. We uh, had Ms. LeBeau sit with forensic voice analyst Guy Wolf uh, to determine if she had been cheating. And I'm here at the court today with the results. All right. So, let's take a look at the first question that was asked. The day your husband walked into the house and you were naked on the couch, were you video chatting with another man? No. All right. What did the forensic an voice analysis reveal? The voice analysis determined that she was being deceptive. Ms. LeBeau, you were video chatting with someone. Could have been a photographer that I was working with. All right, Ms. LeBeau, you can play games with Mr. LeBeau, but you don't get to play games with us. 
Let's go to the next question then. Let's go to the next question then. Since you have been married, have you had physical sexual contact with anyone other than your husband? No. What did the analysis reveal? Your Honor, the voice analysis determined that she was being deceptive. I have an answer to that one. I got really... I bet you, you do. don't need to. No, I got very, very drunk one night and... You got drunk one night and then what? I did get kissed by somebody in the parking lot one night and I am very apologetic for that. Did you but... tell your husband? No. We got together at a bar, so... It... He can't really say anything. All right, yeah, wait, wait. Mr. <laughs> Mr. LeBeau, I am looking at your face. What is going through your mind as you hear this? What's going through my mind is we're done. Like, uh, the, the proof is in the pudding. I deserve better than that. You all have been together for six years. You have two children together, but there is a cloud over this relationship right now. Uh, Ms. Crawley, you've opened this case today. Tell us why. Me and him have been together six years. We have two kids, and he's done nothing but betray me. Um, we wanted to be together so bad that we used to sleep in cars together just to be together, because everybody, you know, would try and pull us apart, wouldn't take us in, so we used to sleep in cars together. But then um, I thought that he would never hurt me. Every after everything that we've been through, I thought we would be okay. But now I find out that he's cheating. He has cheated, and if I find out he's cheating today, it's the end of it. So no amount of history and thing you've been through can get over this? No. All right. Mr. Pompey, what have you got to say in the face of these allegations? I mean, it's all a lie. Her family don't like me, you know, and... It's all a lie? Yeah. So is she making all this up? Is it in her head? Because she thinks you're cheating. No, I'm not cheating. She just always accused me. Do you like want I... this relationship to work? Yes, I do. What is it about her that you love? I mean, the chemistry and, you know, we had a lot of fun, you know. She's just a fun person to be yeah. around? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, Ms. Crawley, you are here and you're trying to make sure the man that you love doesn't break your heart again. Yes. How did he break your heart the first time? Okay. So, I had stayed the night at my mother's house. So, I hadn't talked to him all that day. Okay. So, you know, I had to turn in a private investigator. I got on the social media, a woman messages his profile and says, hey, so I just automatically click in, I'm acting like I'm him, just trying to see who she is. You know, it might just be somebody just hitting him up, you know. But come to find out, this is somebody that he's known and has been seeing. So I continue to act like I am him, and she says, when can I see you again? So automatically, I snap out of him and I snap back into this is his girlfriend. So she gets to telling me everything, gets to spilling the tea on what they've been doing. He's been staying the night over there, planning on leaving me to be with her. How did you get his phone? No, I didn't get his phone. I just got on his um, Facebook. And, and in the midst of this, this lady messages him. Yes. And so you respond as him. Yes. So you basically catfished her. Yes. And so then she. What did you like, say? I just played like him. I was like, hey, you know, what's up? And she, she, you know, she's going in, oh, nothing, just chilling, you know? So I'm like, oh, you know, when was the last time we seen each other? She's like, oh, stop playing. I just seen you last night. Oh, so like, okay. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So I keep going. Then she So said, that's how you found out he was yes, cheating? Yes, yes. Uh, so what else did you find out? Telling her he's moving with her. He's leaving. He's leaving you to go to her. Yeah, she planning on helping him pay child support. They got it all mapped out. When I say mapped out, I mean down to the T. And you're in this conversation with her, and she's just telling you everything. Everything. Oh, yeah. I guess, you know, they had a plan. If I, if I found out about her, she wouldn't say nothing. Hmm. She well, got she... the spilling. So, so you, you found out about the plan detailed. that was in place in case you found out about her. Yes. While oh, you were finding goodness. out about her. Yeah. <laughs> wow. About it, show him proof he still denied it. It wasn't okay. until I called her on three way and she's telling him, Oh, so you didn't say this, you didn't say that, nothing to say. Mr. Pompey, who is this woman? Oh, uh, her name is Drika. Drika, what? Just somebody that, like a friend, that's all. Like a friend? Like a, friend? Like a, friend. Like a bad yeah. friend? What's, what's Drika's name? <laughs> <friend? laughs> no, no, is no. she like a bad friend? No, nah, it's just an old friend, that's all. Well, old friends get in and out of bed all the time. Did you get in and out of bed with her? Yes? No, no. Did you sleep with this young lady? Yes, I did. Oh. I did. Uh, 
But that was back How long ago, ago did this happen, Miss Miss Crawley? Um, probably about two years ago. Did he admit to you that he had slept with this young lady? Yes, he made me literally go through everything just to find out the truth. So he, you finally broke a brother down. Yes. And he confessed. Every time. And this was about two years ago. Yes. All right. Okay, because, I mean, clearly he's not much of a talker. No, yeah, that's kind so... of... That's what I understand, Mr. Cutler. <laughs> well, she had to pull it out of him, All I'm right. sure. So he admits that he's sleeping with her. Yes. So your concern is it wasn't just something that happened two years ago. You're concerned that it's still going on now. Yes. Well, Mr. Cutler, there's her side, there's his side, and there's Miss Green's side, and Miss Green is here. <laughs> Bob, you please for Miss Green. Miss Green? Just step right to the left there. Mr. Bob. I told you I wasn't talking to him. Miss Green, would you please state your full name for the record? Theodrica Green. Miss Green, did you have a relationship with Mr. Pompey? Yes, until uh, we both got busted. So how did how did this relationship start? Start on Facebook. He inboxed me with the little funny eyes. Was like he liked my feel, and I was like, "What you mean? You haven't even seen me?" Then he asked for a picture, and he was like, "I look better than his baby mama." Oh. And I was like, "Who is your baby mama?" And he sent me a picture of her, and I was like, "Oh, she cute." Whatever like that. And he started telling me her problems about how he trying to get away from her. And how he wanted to be with me, but I have a girlfriend. So I would tell him that, like, he can't move in with me, but as far as missing around, yes. Did he tell you that he was still with Miss Crawley? He, he was like, that's his baby mama. He wasn't like, oh, we together. He didn't tell me the whole detail about, oh, we live together and all of that. He said, we have kids together. But and that he, was it? Yeah. My friend inboxed her to let her know that I'm missing with her man. And how long did this sexual relationship last? November 6th of 17. All it's right. 19 now. So it lasted more than a year. Yeah. Mm. And from what I knew, it was only supposed to be a few weeks. Well, he lied. Oh. So you're just finding out today in this courtroom that they had a relationship for over a year. Yes, longer than what I thought, yes. And you were thinking it was only a few weeks. Yes, and I was actually friends with her. After they had got done, you know, messing around or whatever, me and her start talking, you know, I start confiding her, telling her our problems, because, you know, he's playing both of us. So, you know, we start talking, becoming friends. I thought everything was cool. But she's still accused me now. So you're saying nothing's going on now? Oh, no, not now. And are you agreeing? It ain't me, so... But you, Miss Crowley, are not buying this. I still have just my suspicions, you know. Let me tell you something. We go out to eat... I pick up my phone, text, he pick up his phone, she, oh, let me see the phone. Thinking I'm texting him while we at the table. We became closer because he played both of us, so we was like, you know what, we finna be friends, boss up on him, show him he not, you know, knocking no woman down. Like, you know, we still well, finna really, stand strong. Well, really, you know, you like girls, I like girls. Yeah. Believe him here. Exactly. But I didn't know. Just like that. But now you're concerned that they're still having sex. Yes. Hey, what did you just say? She like girls, I like girls, we could really just leave him here. Because <laughs> he's playing both of them. Y'all don't even need him. Don't. <laughs> don't. So he's it, extra. Extra. Is this a proposition? <laughs> We're not a date court. We are <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I got a clear picture. The question is, in your mind, if I'm hearing you correctly, mm -hmm. is, is he still with her? Yeah, He's that's saying all I want to know. But that's what you want to know. All right. Well, to get to the bottom of this, this court has done a full investigation. At this time, we will call licensed polygraph examiner Tommy Platt to determine, is he cheating? Ron, please bring Mr. Yes, Platt in. Yes, sir, get some baby. Tommy Platt. That's all we need. Let's get into these results. Good day, Mr. Platt. Would you please state for the record your credentials? I have over 30 years' experience in the United States military and as a police officer. I've been a licensed polygraph examiner for 11 years and conducted nearly 3,000 examinations. And so you uh, did the polygraph for Mr. Uh, Pompey, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And you asked him, are you currently having a sexual relationship with Miss Green? What was Mr. Pompey's response? He stated no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was being truthful. Thank 
you, Mr. Play, but Miss Crawley, I just saw you roll your eyes. You were like, whatever. Okay, because she's clear. But what about the other women? Oh, okay. Well, talk, talk to me about the other women. Just, you guys have concerns about other women? Oh, it ain't just her. He's been oh. cheating since we've been together. And he oh. know that, she know that, the whole family know this, so. Okay, hold up, Miss Green. You... <laughs> Miss Green, do you want to go over there with her? Because she's I the really one do. who's... She's you, the one who's accusing really him. Do. So, uh, do you want to go over there and help her accuse him? Okay, come on round behind him and stand with the girl. <laughs> we got some... We got some black girl magic going on right here. <laughs> All right. Mr. Pompey, they, they teaming up on you. <laughs> I think they also want to really team up, but I, you know, that's another conversation. <laughs> okay. So you're saying there are other women. Tell me about those other women you're concerned with, Miss Crawley. He always has got caught meeting women online, okay. which is what turned me to a private investigator. Every time I'm asleep, I wake up, he forgets to log out, not that smart. He forgets <laughs> to delete history, and I see POF, Facebook, Messenger, I see messages from other women, and once he, he's gotten caught so much on his own profile that he's making fake pages to talk to these women. How yes. many fake pages does he have? Uh, he got a POF, an Instagram, and a Facebook. And the thing is, he's gotten so good at it that they are not him, but they look just like him. Oh, really? Yes. So how did you find these fake profiles? He does not log out of anything. You know, he don't delete no history. He'll fall asleep on my phone, on my phone, on his chest. He forget the phone is there. And whenever I get up, you know, I'm getting on my phone just to see what's, you know, notifications. And I see POF is open. So I he's using Instagram. your phone to, to contact yes, other my women? Phone, yes. You know what, Kyla? This, between what she's saying and what I'm looking at, it's crazy. Yes, this is, oh, it, it's a circus. I mean, he's using her phone to contact other women online, and he's leaving the apps open so she can find him. I don't know. I mean, but it's consistent with her standing down there with his mistress. You can't get past that part, <laughs> like, can you? I'm like, okay. <laughs> of course he would leave her phone open where he's contacting other women. Of it course it is. It just makes sense. It just goes together. Well, she M brought Mr. Pompey. My phones already. Whatever. Mr. Pompey, are, are you meeting and chatting with other women online? Sometimes. 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 That means yes. That means yes. yes. A lot of times. Yeah. Man, that's player 101. You don't use your girlfriend's phone to do it. If you gonna be that. Who are these other women that you're talking to online? Um, it was a girl that I met recently named Diamond. Well, I call her Diamond, but that's not a real name. Are you sleeping you just... with her? No, I haven't met her. Well, we have heard about this woman, Diamond. Mm hmm Well, Diamond is here. <gasps> Oh, my gosh. How are you? Good day. How are you? Good. How are you? Would you state your name, please, for the court record? Amanda Copeland. And, Ms. Copeland, do you have a nickname that you go by? Mm hmm I mean, he calls me Diamond. He calls you Diamond? Yeah. Well, you know what they say, <laughs> Mr. Cutler, shine bright like a diamond, and here it yeah. is. Not at all. And he gave you that nickname? Mm-hmm. How did you two meet? Uh, I believe we have a bunch of mutual friends, so I guess he found me on people you may know. So he messaged me and said that I looked really good to him, and he liked to get to know me. While you all were communicating, did he ever tell you about his relationship with Miss Crawley? Yeah, he told me they were, you know, together. It was kind of rocky, but he's always wanted an open relationship, so he asked if I was willing to be in one. I said, of course, because I don't really want anything too serious right now. And when he said he wanted to be in an open relationship, you took that to mean what it sounds like. Right. You know, where... You do. You have your relationship, and I have mine on the other side. We have each other still. Did you say you want an open relationship? Mm. <laughs> that ain't one of the ones you gotta Come think on. about, Yeah, man. I mean, I told her that, yeah, at the time, yo. And do... I'm asking you, do you want one? Yes. You do? Yes. And you shared that with her? Miss yeah. Diamond, have you shared that with Miss Crawley? No. Have you shared that with Miss Green? No. no. What kind of relationship do you want with uh, the defendant, Mr. Pompey? He can be happy and how I would never take a man away from his kids and family, but I mean, I want my own thing too on the side, as with him involved in it. So you be willing to be with him and Miss Crawley? Sure. 
Miss Crawley? Well, sorry, you can't have her because she's going to be mine after today. <laughs> I mean, I can, just take, I can just take him away well, and take can, him with me. We together. You I can mean, take we can be together. Like, can whatever. It's, okay. it's whatever, because I can be with him. what did you just say? She could take him, and I'm going to take her. <laughs> and that's your solution to resolving all this? Miss yes. Crawley, are you down for this? I don't like sharing. Sharing is not caring in my situation. <laughs> so, I'm asking you, are you willing to, you know, you and Miss Green? Oh, yeah, we can leave him behind. I'm already leaving him alone after today. This is too much for me. <laughs> no. I hope that you have... Whatever you got going on, I hope it works out. That's all I can say. Oh, and make sure you get two or three jobs because that child support finna hit. <laughs> Mr. Papa, what do you have to say for yourself? All of this has come out. I'm thinking about just doing my own thing. You have been doing your own thing, boy? Yeah, I think, <laughs> I think doing your own thing is what's got you in the situation you're in now. It, it's your head is spinning. I can see it spinning. <laughs> I just gotta ask these ladies stop. Ladies, please, please, what is it about him that's got y'all spinning? <laughs> Sneaky. Well, apparently, he didn't have to chase women. They chasing him. Yeah. And that's what I'm trying to understand. You all have been together for five years. You're engaged. But this wedding is on hold until you can find out whether your fiancé has been cheating. But please, tell me how you all met. I met, I met her on Facebook. I was look, looking through stuff, and I had seen her profile. And I thought she was beautiful. And I was like, damn, I got to hit her up. So... I inboxed her, and ever since then, we've been talking. All right, so meeting somebody on Facebook is one thing, and then when you get together in person, it could be a complete disaster. We what was it about her, besides her beauty, that you liked? I like everything. I like, I like her ambition. I like the way she carries herself. She just got, she got she's, she's a smart girl, but she just makes bad decisions at times, I guess. He appears to be kind of an understated, low-key person. Uh, what was it about him that you liked? His personality, we just click, we get along. I mean, he's sexy. And, I mean, we just, we just clicked as instantly. Like, he thinks stuff, and we be saying the same things together just because we think alike. Like, like Judge Cutler and me. Yeah. You know, I'll be we thinking think something. We... I'll be thinking something. She'll say it. <laughs> you know, for real. Like that. Literally, though. Very good. I we like think alike. It. And we yeah, I think that you say it. I can see what you're thinking right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go with that, Mr. Cutler. Go with that. So, things were good at the beginning. Yeah, everything. They were great. I fell in love with him that, when I first saw him. I literally got his name tattooed three months into our relationship. Oh, really? I got his name four times. So, you had put his name on your body four times? Yeah. I got his name tattooed on my ring finger. You uh, love him that much? Yeah. I just had messed up a few times, and we go through things, and he just don't believe me whatsoever because of the things we had already went through. Yeah, I was gonna get her name tatted, but I'm waiting until after uh, we he find our daughter. He did get a Ninja Turtle, married. though, for my son. Yeah, we had, we had a lot of stuff planned for the marriage, but I canceled it all because basically the issues we're going through right now. So, Mr. Morris, do you have her name tattooed on you? No, nah, not yet, you know. Are you wanting to have her name tattooed? Yeah, I get it tatted when What we are you waiting on? When we get married. <laughs> You want to find out whether she's cheating or not before you take that we step, right? We were going right? wedding yeah, shopping, on ring shopping. We had made all these arrangements for our wedding, but he called it off because he thinks I'm cheating and lying about everything. So, Mr. Morris, have you had an experience in the past with her of cheating? Yes, Your Honor. What happened in that past incident? It was me and a friend chilling with Kendra and one of her homegirls, and, uh... Kendra had stepped outside for a minute, and her friend told me that Kendra had been cheating. Which is a fake friend, because she told him that just so she could get with him. I mean, I had already talked to him about it. I had admitted to it. Okay, wait a minute. Let me ask you this. What did you tell him? Have you cheated in I that? sat on some dude's lap. That's what it was. I sat on a lap. That's what I did. So she told him you were cheating on him, and what she was referring to was the fact you sat on a guy's lap. Yeah. Okay. Are you buying but that? But because we have had past problems, he thinks that I did more than just but, sit on the lap. But the thing is, she told... Her friend told me that she had sex with him. So... 
and that, I did not. Only, you know, I did not. And you believe that she did have sex with this particular gentleman? I did not. I'm, yeah. But I'm asking him. You yes, believe you that? Yes, Your Honor. And my heart is shattered because I really love her. So you Lord believe that she's cheating on you now because of the past? Yeah, I still think she's cheating. Okay, Ms. Moffitt, what are you here to prove? I'm here to prove that I love him. I want to marry him. I want our marriage to go actually to the wedding. We're not fighting every day because he thinks that I'm cheating on him or I'm lying to him every day about something. What did you lie about in the past? It was about little petty stuff. Money, somebody talking to me in the store, anything. You understand that once you tell a lie, yeah. you start eroding your... Yeah, I get your... that. Yeah, I get that, but I'm trying to prove to him that I'm not. Like, I've never... When I was younger, I didn't plan my wedding. I didn't play with Barbie dolls. I didn't see myself getting married to somebody and taking their last name, and that's what I want with him forever. This is what I see. I know I lied in the past. You should forget about that and trust me. And it's... what I'm saying to you is, once you lie, even about the patty stuff, it starts to creep in to the point where folks don't believe you, even when you're telling the truth. And so, you can't expect somebody to just to go from A to Z just because you're at a point that you want to go forward and have them believe you. All right, Ms. Moffitt, let me ask you just point blank. Have you cheated with anyone while you've been with Mr. Morris? Yes. What happened? We had split up. I left. Started drinking, cheated. That's what it was. We had talked about it. We discussed everything. I tell him. But he still don't think that I'm telling everything. Like, he thinks I'm leaving th some things out. Because we have had our problems, and I have cheated before. But what he has, is talking about, I am not lying about. I ain't lied no more to him about anything, because I'm trying to earn his trust back. So, Mr. Morris, how did you find out that she had cheated? Oh, I went through her phone. So you had suspicions that she had been doing something? Yes, Your Honor. All right. And so when you went through her phone, what did you find? Flirty, he... flirty text messages, uh, pictures with dudes, all, all types of stuff. Because at first, when we first started off, she had my trust. I gave her 100% loyalty. Like, I, I trusted her with everything. Soon as incidents occurred, then she stopped, she started losing my trust. I believe Kendra's still cheating and lying to me. I had another dude send me a... Uh, Topless picture of her. So, okay. Somebody sent you a topless uh, picture of your fiance? Yes, Your Honor. It was a picture what happened? of me and... Hold on, hold on. What happened was, uh, we was, in, we was, we was staying in a, a hotel, and uh, she got mad and left. But I guess she ran into some dude in the hallway, so she went up to his room, and it was him and his boy. 15 minutes after that, the dude texted my phone with the picture, it was like, you could keep her because we already had her. You know what I'm saying? So when you got this picture, what did you think? It made me believe that what the dude texted me about her messing with both of them was true. And that's okay. what had happened. Okay, Ms. Moffitt, who were you? Go we had gotten an argument, and I had left, packed up my clothes, left them in the room. I was waiting outside for my sister to come, and I ended up meeting somebody down there. They wanted me to come up to the room, so I came up to the room to wait. How do you go from going upstairs away from my sister to half nude taking a picture? No, it was just a boob out, literally. That's what it was. It was a boob, one boob. And I took the picture with him to make his friend jealous. Hold on. Did you know these guys? I had already known one of them while he was at work. Okay, so had you ever been intimate with either of those guys no. in the past? No. How did you feel comfortable taking off your top in front of guys you'd never been intimate before so they could take your picture to send it to their friends to make them jealous? Because <clears throat> I thought it was... We used to... I, I used to, like, get mad, go do something for revenge. That's what it was. Let me just say this to you. You are a beautiful young woman. You have a young man who loves you, who wants to respect you, and you're doing things like that doesn't put you in a position to be respected. So don't do that. Look at him. That hurt him. You, if you belong to him, belong to him. Tell her how you felt when you received a topless picture from her that you didn't take? You know it was her, right? Yeah. You know that, that, that messed me up? You oh. know what I'm saying? Even though I still forgave you on it, I still think, like, something went on.
Uh, do you have any other reason to believe that your fiance has cheated on you or is cheating on you now? Yes, Your Honor. What other evidence do you have? She said she was sitting in the mall parking lot to get her head clear. I had went up there just to see if she was sitting up there and I didn't see her car nowhere, so I had texted her. I was like, you're not, you're not at the mall. She was like, yes, I am. I was like, send me a picture right there by the entrance just to prove that you're at the mall. So you want her to take a selfie? Yeah. yeah. So I see her pull up. She pull up, get out the car, go walk with her by the entrance to take a picture. So I, I start walking over there because I'm about to, like, talk to her, like, oh, you just pulling up. And uh, as I was walking over there, her ex-boyfriend get out the car. So, so he was... So me and him had got into it a little bit, and he was trying to fight. But long story short, that's what happened. We had gotten a fight, like we always do, arguing about me lying because he don't believe me about nothing. Did you go to the mall? You, and you I was went? at the mall, and I left. It was like 10 o'clock at night. I had left, and he wanted me to say I was there. So I did go back to take a picture because I wasn't lying about being there. All right, so your story is, when you're texting your fiancé about your whereabouts, <clears throat> Instead of telling him, while well, I left, you and your ex-boyfriend drove back to the mall he, so you could try to take a picture. My ex didn't know what I was doing, no, because we had gotten an argument and I went and hung out with my ex. Okay, were you at the mall with your ex? Yeah. You and the ex left? Yeah. Okay, you do understand the reason he was concerned wasn't about the place. It was who <laughs> yeah, you were I with. Yeah, I know, but he don't believe me about nothing. I wasn't Why lying. should he? I, you're missing the point. The point is, whether you're at the mall, at the grocery okay, that's store... that's what I'm I've lied about a lot of things. That's why he don't believe me now about nothing, and I get that. Okay. But I'm not lying about it. Okay, here's the thing, and I want you to listen and not interrupt, okay? All right. Follow the train. He is concerned that you are with other men, whether you're at the mall, the beauty shop, your mama's, Auntie Susie, wherever... It's not where you are, it's who you with. And why didn't you tell him you were with your ex? Because I knew it was gonna be a big fight, because I knew there it, it would be a big fight. There it is. Okay, I did. Every time we'd fight, I would leave and go hang out. That's what I would do. With an ex? With, I won't, yeah, with an ex, with my ex. Cut I'm glad you don't hang out with your exes when we fight. Let me just say that. <laughs> that right. You know. Back at you. Yeah. Every time you fight, you go hang out with an ex? No, uh -uh, that wouldn't work for me. You don't go to the arms or the shoulder of another man. Or any other body part. Or any... Well, yeah. <laughs> or any other body part. Make that part clear. Any other body part. Any other body part when you're falling out with your, your boyfriend or your fiancé or your husband. That's not how you resolve it. Now, I understand about clearing your head, but you can't clear your head if somebody's dumping something in it. And I'm sure your ex-boyfriend was doing just that. All right, Mr. Morris. Yes, Your Honor. You believe she's cheating. Yes. She has a history of not telling you the truth. You know, you got an engagement. You want to marry this woman, but you're concerned. Yes, Your Honor. If you find out she's cheating, you don't want to go through with it. No, it's over. All right. Well, to get to the bottom of this, uh, the court has ordered Ms. Moffitt to submit to a polygraph examination, and we have the results. Ron, would you please escort certified polygraph examiner Michael Williams into the courtroom? How are you doing? Good. How are you? Good to see you today. Before we get the results, Ms. Moffitt, is there anything you want to say? I do love you, and you'll see what these results. You know, Ms. Moffitt, we say regularly that this is your opportunity. This is the moment that you have to come clean. You know what's happened. We don't know what's happened. You're the only two people in the room that know what happened when you took that polygraph. And so if it's something that's not good, this is your opportunity to tell your story instead of letting Mr. Williams tell your story. Okay, I don't have nothing to say. Okay, let's do this. So, Mr. Williams. Yes, Your Honor. You asked Miss Moffat on the night the semi-nude photo was taken of you, did you have physical sexual contact with any man other than Mr. Morris? What was her response? Your Honor, she said no. What did the lie detector determine? 
The lie detector determined that she was being truthful. Mr. Morris, does that give you some sense of relief? Yes, Your Honor. I told you. For three years now. Well, we still got some more. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> we do. All right, we do have another question. Uh, Mr. Williams, you asked Ms. Moffitt, since the start of your relationship with Mr. Morris in 2012, have you had sexual intercourse with any other man? What was her response to that question? She said yes. That was an admission. Ms. Moffitt? You admitted to having sex with another man since your relationship with... Yeah. ...Mr. Morris? Yeah. Early in court, you mentioned that you had cheated before. No, he knows about... He knows about everything. I've told him. So there's no other cheating that's no. going on that he doesn't already know about? No. He don't believe me, so, yeah, he don't think I... He thinks I'm lying. But, Ms. Moffat, can you blame him? No, I can't, but... Can you blame him? No. Nope. Well, that's why it's important to talk to Mr. Morris. Mr. Morris... You had your questions answered. My question to you is, where is your relationship going from here? Hopefully, we could work it out and get married. That's where I want our relationship to go. All right. That's good. Tell her what you hope tomorrow looks like between the two of you. I hope tomorrow looks as beautiful as you. Ms. Moffat, the fact that he still wants to marry you actually is a little amazing to me. But if he's willing to go forward with you, you've got to treat him like you deserve to be treated. <laughs> you've got to give him a reason to trust you and give him a reason to step out on faith to let go of the past. It's not going to be easy, but I can tell you it's worth it. It's absolutely worth it. You all have been together for two and a half years. You're living together. You have three children together. You previously appeared in front of Judge Lauren Lake of Paternity Court, where you got your paternity issues resolved. But Judge Lake ordered you to appear in this court because there are unresolved issues of infidelity. Am I right, Ms. Robinson? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, tell us why you've opened this case. I opened this case because I've been with Larry for two years, and even though we established, you know, paternity with our children, I feel like our relationship is still on the line because I think he's cheating. Oh. I'm not happy, and I'm pretty sure he's not happy. So, for two and a half years, you all have been going back and forth, back and forth the entire time? Um, I guess it started probably three weeks to... Three weeks to a month into our relationship. We've been rocky for a minute now because in the beginning of our relationship, it was... It started with untrust. Like, we, we got together, found out she was talking to some other people and other men. So, we got into it over that. Then, over her... Over that reaction, I started talking to other people. So, and that broke the trust in the beginning. So, that's why we've been having problems down the line. But, Mr. Smith, right here, right now, what are you here to prove? I'm here to prove that I've been faithful and we're trying to just get this over with so we can have a successful family and move on with our life. You said the first three weeks, I hope it was longer than that, were happy times. Tell me about that first three weeks of the beginning. Okay, so... Look at that smile. Because uh -huh. <laughs> I love him. That's my I baby, you know? Too. I do love him. That's the only uh, reason y'all made it this far. <laughs> that smile says a lot. It I does, mean... it does. That makes me feel a little better. Okay, tell me about the... Tell me how he caught your eye. So, when I, I, when I seen him, I was with my friends, and I'm like, you know, you looking real daddy-ish. We was at the gas station. <laughs> he had the little sweatpants on. He was looking good, for real. Uh, now, did you step to him, or did he... I you stepped went... to him. You stepped to him. All right, tell me what that looked like. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Do you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> no, wait a minute. Listen up. Listen All up. Right. What, bring it. Bring Cause it. Because I just had to, you know, I had to put a little game. I had him call me, you know. I, I, I pushed off for two weeks and talked to him for two weeks, you know. We've been together ever since. So, it was some spark there. It was. There. Yeah, I ain't it was never... definitely a spark. I ain't never... All right, Mrs. Smith, I need yeah. to hear... Go ahead, uh, yeah, Big Daddy. Yeah, when I first think, I'm like... Yeah. 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 Wait a minute, that's fine. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. yeah. It ain't... Wait a minute, it's some truth... It's some truth to the Big Daddy, because uh -huh. he just smiling. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, She was worth waiting two weeks for, right? When I first met her, she was a very attractive female, pretty, sexy, intelligent, beautiful. 
You know, yeah. she, she she attracted me, so I had to get her. We talked, we, we took off from there. We've been rocking there ever since, but it's just been all these complications with it, so that's why we're here today. So we talked about the rocking, which sounds lovely. Tell me about the rolling. Why are we here today? Why you think he's cheating? I feel like he's cheating because um, I was rolling through his Facebook and his phone one day, and I seen some Facebook messages, okay. which I have today. Ron, would you get it's, those for us, please? It's it's about two women that I don't even know, you know? All right, so this okay. is him. So is, th this says Larry. Yeah, what you doing? Mm -hmm. In Heights, Blank Heights. Yeah. What's poppin'? I'm about to hit the Ceno. That's what's up. <laughs> like, what's... And then the second one says, and this is a different woman, about to go to sleep now. I was up because my baby was up. And so he asked, you got a hubby now? And she said, why? Why you say that? Because I was trying to what's up with you. <laughs> and you found these in his phone. Okay. On what? his Facebook. What? Wait, 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 wait. Why are you trying to what's up with somebody? I ain't trying to what's up with him. I just needed to talk to him because I don't talk, talk about... Talk about what? What did you talk about? I don't about? get no... I don't talk. Him. We don't talk. But I mean... what you said here was... I was trying to what's up with you, which means you were trying to do something. Oh, no, I wasn't trying to do anything. That's what it's it saying. Just talking. I was just trying to just... But then, just... here's the other part. Okay. The part before that. You got a hubby now. Why was that important if you weren't trying to what's up with him? Right. <laughs> See, you had to first find out where they had a hubby. Dude, you trying to be her hubby or something? So, Our... But Mr. Smith, did you find out what's up with this woman? No. Did you no, go? It never happened. I believe <laughs> you did. Have to find I believe you did happened. find out no. what's up with this You did not have any kind of sexual no. relationship no, or contact with this nothing. woman. I no. like what about the one with the casino? Or as you said, the casino. No. Did you hook up with her? No, nothing ever happened with neither one of them. We just talked. So you just talking? Just talking. That's, that's it. your testimony. That's my testimony. You just talking. He keeps on saying he just talking. Okay, nothing so why happened. did he come home? He don't come home. Give me an example. Okay, so he gets off for work about you know, between three to six, depending on how his boss feeling. So, he calls me. We, he, I didn't contact, we didn't talk to about six, seven. By that time, he FaceTiming. I see him outside, standing at the bus stop, you know. I'm like, okay. So, so you FaceTiming him, he's on the bus stop. He, he FaceTimed me home. to prove to me that he was on his way home. I ain't even asked okay. him to FaceTime. And this is about what time? This was about seven. Seven in the evening. So, okay. I, I, I'm like, okay, you on your way. So, I didn't mess with him until about one, you know, about eight o'clock, an hour later. And no call, no show, no answer, phone going to voicemail. He not active on Facebook. But I'm like, you just left your family house. I didn't start getting worried until it started, until about 10, 11. And so, three, four hours later. Yeah, and when it started raining bad, I'm looking, it's 12 o'clock, all the warnings on the TV going off. And I'm like, I'm trying to call. I'm like, what's going on? Shoot situation was I got off work okay. on my way on my way to my to back home it started raining it was a huge rainstorm but so it didn't I'm start going, it's, 12 it's, I got a I got a flood warning sent to my phone saying it was really raining I'm already halfway soaked already halfway soaked just getting off of work so my my family member would live right down the street so I'm like I might as well go over here instead of standing in the but rain, if it wasn't the bus but if we soaked. didn't oh, hold on, hold so on. in that process when I went over there and stayed over my family member house it ended up being a power outage so now I don't have oh, no communication no. had a, what they used to call a landline you could have used that yeah, no, they didn't have no Maybe he can use the charger. Phone, everybody my, has My family them. member phone was dead as well. You can charge his phone up as well. So now nobody got a charger. Well, Here's the deal. Based on your court papers and, was... and what you all had put in them, we did a little research. And we have a court uncovers here. And what I have here is something from the newspaper that says, severe Metro Detroit rainstorm. So there was a rainstorm. A horrific thunderstorm crossed southeast Michigan overnight, ending with flooded roads and downed power lines. A severe thunderstorm warning was issued at approximately 1 a.m. Four hours after you left no. work. Yes, <laughs> yes. That's what Seven I'm saying. Hours. Seven That's hours. That's what I'm saying, because it didn't start oh, raining until it was like 12 o'clock. I'm like, so no. what's going Then on? the warning expired at 1.45 a.m. So why'd you go home? 
No, that's not that's not what happened. <laughs> <laughs> that is what happened. <laughs> Yeah. There's a different, I'm crazy. A different kind of storm going on. Yeah, a whole uh, different kind different. of storm. And that's why I don't trust him. So, did he come home that night? No, he did not come home that night. I, I have no choice but to feel like he's cheating because I come home, I ain't never spent the night out in our relationship. We've been together for two and a half years. I, shoot, I don't even go nowhere. So, okay, he, came, so he came home at some point, right? About nine o'clock, bro. I went to sleep about five, woke up about nine, because I know he'd be at work about that time. Even if I know anything, he's going to go to work. Okay. The next day. The next day. Okay. And you still ain't seen or heard from him. I still ain't seen or heard from him. I go All on right. Facebook, and it say he active on Facebook. So, I call him, and he answered. He's just so nonchalant about it. Um, he like, oh, well, it was raining, and if it's raining, I'm not coming home. Ooh. That made me mad, so I'm like, okay. So, I, I took my babies, my three babies, my one little stroller, little twin, little carrier. We took two buses to this man's job. And I, 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 I tried to go up there calm and collective, you know? <laughs> but. When I seen him, I was just so mad. I'm like, dang, you really gonna play me like Ms. that? Miss Robinson, that me and you both know you went down there to fire him up. Yeah. yeah. Now, come that's on. Exactly, that's exactly what happened. That's exactly what happened. That's exactly what happened. That's exactly what happened. When she loaded up them twins of that baby, she was coming in as a hurricane. Yeah. <laughs> it was a storm the night before. They were gonna oh, be yeah. storm that morning. It came. <laughs> so I'm just still working. Next thing I know, I see her at the door. I'm scared. I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> Where's she coming from? So, now, wait a minute. Mr. Uh, Smith, if you don't say nothing else true, I know that's man, true. Oh, my God. I'm like, I don't even get a chance to explain <laughs> the story. He nothing. just was too oh. nonchalant for me. She gets straight to The physical. bottom line is, you think that while that storm was kicking off, he was kicking off. With somebody else. With somebody else. Yeah, because, okay, so when he finally came home, you working and you moving and stuff, you know, and you ain't been home in two days. Ain't no way you smell like soap. <laughs> smell he like smell soap. Like pure... Okay, wait a minute. What? Hold up. He smell like pure soap, okay? <laughs> I'm like, I, even if he did got off that day, you feel me? I, I kind of feel like he got off at 2 o'clock and probably slid off somewhere or something. He smells so clean for me. Especially what? being gone for two days. I'm getting accused of cheating because I smell like soap. Mm -hmm. I was over my, my family in my house that morning, so why wouldn't I wash up and then go to work? Why would I go to work staying? But you still smell sense. like soap after you got off That's of common work. sense. Okay. I didn't stop nowhere. I didn't go nowhere. I went to work and I came home. That was it. So here's what I want to know for sure. Mr. Smith, yeah. it is your testimony that the day that you came home from the storm, after the storm, after the storm came down to your job, you were not with another woman. Yes, Your Honor. And it's your testimony that you have been faithful. Yes, Your Honor. That there has been no cheating on your part. Yes, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Keller, I think we got what we need. I do, and here's what we're looking at. She thinks he's cheating, and if you find out he is cheating... I, I gotta be done with this. All right. This court has done a full and complete investigation at this time, the court would like to call certified polygraph examiner Kendall Shull to determine, is he cheating? Kendall Shull. Thank you. Uh, would you please share for the court record and for our litigants your credentials? I was privileged to be hired by J. Edgar Hoover in the FBI uh, right after I graduated from college. Spent almost 30 years with the FBI in Washington, D.C. You asked, Mr. Smith, when you didn't come home and claimed it was due to the weather, did you have physical sexual contact with another woman other than your girlfriend, Miss Robinson? What was Mr. Smith's response? He said no. You nervous? No, I'm not. Why you don't use us? <laughs> <laughs> Shoot, I'm getting what nervous. did the lie detector here. determine, Mr. Shaw? Well, the lie detector determined that he was being truthful, Your Honor. <laughs> 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 yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> Let's find out some more. I told Shoot. you, man, I told you. That made me smile. It was just raining. That made me smile. <laughs> you asked Mr. Smith, after your girlfriend, Miss Robinson, confronted you at work because you didn't come home, 
did you have physical sexual contact with another woman on that day? What was his response? His response was no. What did the lie detector determine? On this question, the lie detector determined that he was also being truthful. <laughs> I told you, lady, you don't think I'm saying okay. it like that. She's smiling. <laughs> she's smiling like what she said, daddy. <laughs> okay, he, he might be a little more daddy. Let me finish hearing this. All right. <laughs> finish hearing this. All right. Well, we've got one more question. <sighs> you asked Mrs. Smith, during your two and a half year relationship with Ms. Robinson, have you had physical sexual contact with anyone other than Ms. Robinson? What was his response to that question? His response was no. What did the lie detector determine? Your Honor, on this question, it determined that he was actually being deceptive. What? No way. That's not nah, cool. Don't get to doing that, no way. Mr. Smith? Yes, Your Honor. This woman loves you. You owe it to her to come clean. So if you've been be kissing, kissing, hugging, oral sex, any type of physical contact. Yeah, I did. What happened? We had an apartment together, and we was going back and forth. We was arguing every day. She was um, coming in late at work every day, just making me think she was doing something. So yeah, I talked to a female. I hugged her or whatever. We talked or whatever. Kicked her, but I ain't never had no no physical penetration and no sex with her and like, stuff like that. And then. So what did you do with her? Was it oral sex? Yeah. Okay. All right. And that's the only one you're saying that you. That was it. About. That was the only time I ever did something. Well, Miss Robinson, what we need to know. Mm -hmm. You came here to get some answers. You got those answers. Where is this relationship going from here? <laughs> and let me just say this. And I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to you woman to woman, okay? It's okay to forgive him and work it out. You don't have to go, I'm out! Now, you can't. And I don't want to just do that, but it, I mean. You, you can go and, either and way. I, what just made, what, what irritates me is I tell him just to tell me the truth. Because we can work things out better if he just tell me the truth. You all have been together for 17 years. You're married, but you're currently separated. And whether this separation ends in a reunification or a divorce all depends on what happens here today. Am I right, Ms. Allen? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Now, you've opened up this case. The stakes are high. Please explain. Me and Mr. Anderson, we have been together for 17 years. We've been separated, living out of the household together for the last year. Wow. Exactly. Uh, me and Mr. Anderson, uh, relationship has been up and down, peaks and valleys for a minute now. Uh, it all determines what happens. We have dated since we've been separated. We have discussed getting back together since we've been separated. But for me, I cannot get back together with Mr. Anderson unless I find out if he cheated or not. If not, these divorce papers will be signed before we leave here today if he did cheat. Locked and loaded. <laughs> Locked and loaded. Yeah. Ready. So everything, your marriage, in total is at stake here today. Yes, ma'am. All right, uh, Mr. Anderson. Yeah. She says you all have been through peaks and valleys in your relationship. This has got to be the valleyest of the valley. Yes, it is. At this valleyest point. of the valley? Yeah. <laughs> all right. Yes. Okay, Mr. Cutler. <laughs> yeah, the valleyest of the valley. I mean, it doesn't get more crucial than this. That's true. She said it depends on what happens here today. Whether we find out if you all are going to be together or whether you are going to be separate because she's accusing you of cheating. How does that make you feel? Well, it bothers me because uh, it's always been an accusation. It's, it's, it's always somebody or something. And I spend so much time trying to prove I love her. I've always loved her. She's been a very special person to me for a very long time. The accusations do get overwhelming. Uh, so I guess today will settle whether we're going to continue or not, because I know I haven't done anything wrong. So when this comes out, I think I'll take the joy in her apology and uh, working forward to being together again. Wow. <laughs> you know, it's funny because uh, I'll give you an example. Uh, she 
came into, uh, I work at a nursing home. I've always worked in nursing homes. And uh, she actually pulled up to the job one day, runs inside the nursing home, grabs a book with all the employees' names and numbers. And uh, apparently she called them. You know, which I thought was a very bold move. I guess that was her way of trying to figure out if I was cheating with someone inside the nursing home I was working in at the you time. You was. And she called your coworkers. Yes, she did, embarrassing me. OK. Did she think you were sleeping with the residents? I, no, the, 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 <laughs> Wow. The employees, the female employees of the nursing home. OK, all right, that's, that's a relief. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but did you do that? OK. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. Okay, that was a, yes, you did. Okay. Yes, I did. I, it, it wasn't a book of the residents. It was a book of the employees who worked there. Okay, so you called his coworkers, and one coworker said, "Yes, we I are used to work here." Yes. And I knew a specific young lady. I called her, and she gave up the name of the young lady he was seeing at the nursing home. Third party. I went Third to the party. nursing home to get the book to get her Third information party. because Mr. Anderson was actually at her house when I was digging Third through the book. Third party. No, no, So did party. you ever call this woman? Yes, I did speak to her. And what did she say? That was her boyfriend. <laughs> did she know that he was in a relationship with you? I didn't know he was in a relationship. He was so smart. He was so intelligent. That's a lie. I was so That's impressed not true. by him. That's not um, true. I thought that nope, I was dating nope, him. Nope, I didn't know nope, anything nope, about him. Nope, he tells me nope. that's his friend, but why does a friend lie on you? No, 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 no. <laughs> what led to your separation? How did you get to that point? <sighs> Mr. Anderson is a serial cheater. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he does not get caught, so he believes that he cannot be convicted without physical evidence. Wow. I am tired of him getting caught in these situations with the, all these different females that he tells me are friends. Every last one of his friends had a different spinoff of his, of his version of the story. Mm. That led to me... It took a long time to get strong enough to walk away from that because I don't want to be in a relationship where I'm the third party. Right? I don't right? want to do that. And I got tired. What was the last straw? What broke this camel's back that said, OK, I'm out. We're separating. He ended up in the hospital, and I brought some exhibits for the court to prove. OK. Why don't you step to the monitor, then? OK. Mr. Anderson got sick November... Uh, day before Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving's Eve. He had to be rushed to the emergency room and we went to the hospital. Okay. He had to have emergency surgery. He had an ulcer perforated in his stomach. Oh. As I'm sitting there, uh, I go through his phone and the first thing I seen was a Hey Big Head text. Where I'm from, Hey Big Head is side chick lingo. What else made you say, okay, this is, I gotta go? OK. We were supposed to go to a club together. Mr. Anderson decided at the last minute he wasn't going to mm -hmm. go. I went to the party alone. When I came home from the club, Mr. Anderson had locked me out the house. <laughs> I left and stayed with a family member. When I came home that evening, when he woke up that morning, first thing he said to me, I don't want this. I don't want you anymore. I don't want this marriage anymore. And I am leaving you. Don't want you to tell the whole it's truth. What happened after that was he decided that he was going to leave and go to New York to stay with a family member. OK. Um, he would no longer wanted the relationship, and this was prior five days up to him leaving to go to New York. I looked him in his face and I told him, if you don't want me, this is the last time you're going to actually tell me in my face you don't want me. I meant that. So what I decided to do was let him go. You want to leave? Leave. A day before he decides to leave, oh, well, I'm going to leave to go to New York, but I'm coming back. I'm going to stay with a family member. And then returns to the house with a backache. What's, what, what's the significance of that? OK, the significance is Mr. Anderson has had a, a, about two operations on his back. He has rods and screws in his back, and he cannot take travel in a car, a bus, a train, even a plane, longer than an hour, hour and a half. Mr. Anderson claims he was in New York. I we're in Connecticut. That's less than an hour ride. He claims that's where he was, but once he came home, his body was exhibiting behavior of a much longer trip. We had back spasms. We had legs shaking. You couldn't sleep at night. I had to get up and make you heating, uh, heating pads for his body to sleep. Your girlfriend should have did that. She the one you went to see. <laughs> so you think the fact that he came home with a backache means that he was, you know, a longer distance than New York? I believe that he traveled from Connecticut to Georgia. Why Georgia? Because the young lady lives in Georgia. Once I contacted her, she lives in Georgia. Which young lady? The young lady 
that he left to go see the... Hey, Big Head. Mr. Anderson, you know, you left for 30 days. Were you in Georgia? No, I was in New York. And, and the reason my back was hurting is because when I was in New York, I was doing street activities and I was up constantly. So the fact that you didn't contact her during this time was just to teach her a lesson? Yeah, like, I just want you to know how it feels. It wasn't because you were with some other no, woman? No, it had nothing to do with that. And I told her that after I came back. I said, I wanted you to know how it feel, but it backfired because she obviously don't feel for me the way I feel for her. Because when she stays out and don't call and I can't reach her, when my wife is gone and she's out like that, I worry. Yes, I do. Well, Miss Allen, I noticed that you have another point there, contacted other woman. Tell me about that. I contacted her originally, initially, myself. As soon as I asked her questions, she blocked and deleted me. Okay. But I did get her to respond once I started texting her from Mr. Anderson's phone. You catfished her. Yes, I did. All right, and you submitted those her. messages to the court. Is yes, that correct? Yes, I did. You wrote, you acted like you didn't like it. It could have been better. Ha. Our protection? What protection? It's her belief that she's asked... Her response is, we didn't use protection while having sex, correct? Absolutely. Ah! <laughs> OK. All right, thank you. Thank Would you, you step back to the podium, please? <laughs> Mr. Anderson, who is this woman who responded, it could have been better, when the text was sent posing as you, you're acting like you didn't like it? Because the, the natural response would have been, what are you talking about? That's what I originally said. When, I, when, I, when all this was brought to me, I was flabbergasted because I really didn't know what was going on. I know the person. Yes, I do know the person. I haven't seen this person in over 35-something years. We were kids. We still ain't seen each other. Her this children was... okay. were asking about my husband. How is that okay. possible if you never seen me? What? Well, okay. here's the thing. Clearly, we're not going to get a response... No, we're not. ...up or down about this woman. Are there any other women that you're concerned about? <laughs> Let the church stay. OK, 17 years, 17 different women. But we're only going to go to this one. I had a family member's neighbor tell me <laughs> he was sleeping with the other neighbor. How do they know this? He was creeping around on his peeping Tom <laughs> that day, I, I suppose, this... This, this friend of the family. And the friend of the family said he heard noises from the window and he was on his peeping time and he was peeping in the window and he told me he seen my husband sleeping with the neighbor. Saw it with his own eyes. Saw it with his own eyes. And called you and told you this? He waited for me to come around and tell me. Okay, so he says he's, he heard... <laughs> noises. Heard noises. So I guess he was doing a good job that time. <laughs> so this friend heard noises. Thank you. You're welcome. And he goes up and looks. He looks through the window and he tells me, my husband was blowing her back out. Uh, Those are his words, exactly. That he saw with his own eyes. That's what he said. OK, Mr. Anderson? Yes, Shana. Were you giving it to the neighbor real good? <laughs> <laughs> no. Notice she said this person was the peep in time, which sounds kind of creepy, don't you? It well, does. Um, I, I was going right. to say, I... Exactly. It does. <laughs> all right, now, first of all, I know this man. Have you seen my wife? Beautiful woman. This man see what I see, but can't have what I got. So, of course, a person like that, that's always trying to get with my queen, gonna say what he wanna say. I'm a smart man. Why would I go in a neighbor house and let make it so that any and everybody can see it? I'm not that stupid. But again, he was after this. I, I just, I gotta say, Mr. Cutler, it is creepy <laughs> that a man says, a, a friend says, hey, I heard sexual noises. I went to see what was happening. Thank you. <laughs> but can I say this? It wasn't one story. It was a combination, a compilation of him acting crazy and the guy telling me that. And so all of these things, the list, the, the list that you showed us and, and submitted as an exhibit, you said, I'm out. We're separating. Absolutely. OK. During this separation, is it a... We have folks coming. We taking a break, and so during the break, people do whatever they want to do. We still married. Ain't no such thing as no, no break. No, And no. is that your understanding? Yeah, we don't do that. Okay. We don't do that. Nah, we don't... We don't do that. Your testimony to this court is you have not messed around no, during no. your separation. No, not at all. And you're also telling this court that you have not messed around during your entire 17-year marriage. Exactly. Correct? Correct. Okay. Correct. And, Miss Allen, you're shaking your head no. No, because... As, as he's answering the question, you're shaking your head no. <laughs> That's a lie. You shouldn't lie in court. <laughs> so... Judge Cutler? So, 
Mr. Keller, what we have is a marriage on the line. They have been separated for over a year. The separation came about because of years of distrust, it sounds like, on the part of Ms. Allen. It all rides on this today. Will she file those divorce papers when she first start when we first started? They're gonna find out. Or are they going home together? We have these unanswered questions. And to address these unanswered questions, this court has done a full and a complete investigation. At this time, the court will call a certified polygraph examiner, Dave Lawrence, to determine is he cheating? <laughs> Good day, Mr. Lawrence. How are you? Just fine, sir. How are you? I'm doing fine, thank you. It's good to see you. Good to see you. Would you state your credentials, please, for the court? Yes, sir. I'm a retired 30-year law enforcement uh, veteran. I've been a polygraph examiner for the past 26 years. I've conducted thousands of various types of polygraph exams. And you conducted a polygraph examination on Mr. Anderson, is that correct? That's correct, sir. You asked Mr. Anderson, since beginning your relationship with Ms. Allen, have you had sexual intercourse with a woman you were communicating with in Georgia? What was his response? He said no. What did the lie detector determine? What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was being deceptive. <laughs> Woo! Breathe. You asked Mr. Anderson, have you had sexual intercourse with the woman who is the neighbor of Miss Allen's relative? What was his response? He said no. What did the lie detector determine? The lie detector determined that he was being deceptive. <laughs> wow. For real? My bad. You're bad? <laughs> You're bad? Is you serious? Deceptive ain't the same thing to me That's as being guilty. deceptive mean lie. Come to find out you was everybody. 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 You ain't even got that much money and oh. to spread around. Oh. Okay, Ms. hold on. Sorry. Ms. Hold on. I'm sorry. Mr. Anderson. Yes, ma'am. I don't even have words. You just, you knocked it out the park. You got a perfect score. I guess so. The apparently. wrong score, but the perfect score in apparently. that. Apparently. I'm sorry that um, anything that I've done hurt her because it was never my intention to hurt her. Um, it's probably guess... never your intention to get caught. No, Dang. no, oh, no, not, not, no, not, not the case. Yes, yes. Okay. What if I did you like that? What if I screwed around and came the home to you? The truth of the matter is, I don't That's know what fair. you do because you never come home. I wonder why. Well, then... what I'm coming home to? You right. All right. Okay. Ms. Allen, uh, you came here to get some answers. Yeah. And you got answers. Thank you. This is a 17-year relationship on the line. What are you going to do? I'm done. I'm beautiful. Um, <laughs> I can date. I have plenty of options. I'm going to take those options. You can't realistically go forward with someone who refuses to hold himself accountable. Absolutely. Absolutely. Absolutely.